Hello, everyone, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Audra and Matt here, and Audra and Matt are um, the uh, owners of Carmen's Little Leaders, and they have an amazing topic to talk about. So just so everyone knows that they have their own podcast on our series, we, on The Advisor, we have a podcast community, and each of our people in our podcast community have their own podcast series. So you'll be able to look at all their different videos if you go on and hear about the amazing things that they talk about. And today, Audra and Matt want to talk about topic of forgetfulness and how to improve your forgetfulness and improve children's forgetfulness and help, help, help them retain their information better and help them to grow. So when they become young adults and they grow into their adulthood, they have different techniques that actually can help them remember things. And I think we all could use that, including myself, because <laughs> as I get older, the more forgetful I become. So yeah. And so this is a great topic to talk about. So Audra and Matt, take it away. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for allowing us on your show. It's exciting and we really love what you do. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, we uh, we have four uh, adult children and really this topic came to mind when our 24-year-old daughter was looking to study at the, uh, to take a real estate test to become a real estate agent. And she said, you know, dad, what do I have to do to study to learn all this information? Because that book was so at least a couple inches thick and it really hit me hard. And I thought, you know what? I don't know how to help her. I, yeah. I don't know what to say, actually. Speaking you know? of which, Matt always likes to have the answers for anybody, but especially for his kids when they ask something. So he was really like, huh, because he did naturally, you did naturally well at school and yeah. different things. He can, he's, he's smart. He remembers a lot of stuff, but um, our daughter Brooke was preparing for this. And it's, as anybody knows, who's taken a real estate, there's a lot of condensed information and you just have to regurgitate it. Quickly. In a short yeah. period of time and quickly, <laughs> and, and it has to be accurate or, or you don't pass. And that's a problem. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I started to research what that might look like. Um, and we found that, uh, the uh, <clears throat> there's a gentleman that started back in 1885, um, and he actually did a study that showed when you learn something in a session, let's say it's whatever 20 minute hour site or whatever it might be, at the end of that session, that's when you've learned all you're going to learn. Well, I guess there's no real uh, revelation there if you think about it, yeah. um, but you know it it's true. Um, and then the the big thing was he started to share and look at what can we do to increase that retention rate? Because on its own, I guess within 24 hours, according to his study, uh, you lose about 50 percent or, or some people lose up to 70 percent of the information that was taught. Um, yeah. And so it just quickly declines. And with those uh, with those declining, um, if you're needing it for a job, you know, if you need it for your career uh, and, and other important events, um, then it could be a problem for us, you know. Um, yeah. And some people naturally, I think, do it better than others. Um, and so um, but what the, the big thing that he talked about is that. And, and really none of it's a revelation, but he just talks about memories weaken over time. Um, and of course, the biggest drop in that retention happens in that first 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, and if the if you help uh, equate those things to meaningful events, then you can do a little better job generally. Um, right. But if it's trivia um, and there really is no direct link to something important, you'll lose that even quicker, right. so to speak according to what he was saying. And so, and when you look at how fast that knowledge drops off, um, it's uh, kind of disappointing in a way, you know? Yeah. You, you... It makes it hard. It makes it hard for kids in school. It makes it hard, you know, for us as adults trying to, you know, I mean, you make the effort to learn it. Yeah. Um, and if there's a strategy, I think that we can um, just share that because it was new to us and we're in our 50s, you know, uh, but if there's a strategy that can help improve um, something that we all need and can benefit from, my goodness, let's, you know, let more people know about it. So, yeah. And I, yeah, one, you know, clearly college is one of the areas where we need to 
retain that information we've learned. Yeah. You get you get a flood of information. It's it's many times what you learn the rate of learning in, than in high school. Yeah. And so, you know, it's it's a big thing. And so we just thought we'd like to share with you what he came up with in 1885, mm -hmm. if you will. Now, the good thing was those studies were all recreated in 1995 and they mirrored his results. So yeah. we really haven't changed that much evidently as yeah. humans in our brain since then to now, evidently. Mm -hmm. um, and so Audra, do you wanna share what he found in, to increase the retention. Yeah, yeah. So what they basically kind of broke it down to say is if you have a learning session, that's where you start. So whether that's an hour session or a half a day, that's your session one. And that's where you're gathering that information and learning it for the first time. And so to improve our odds of recollection and using that uh, knowledge, they say on day two, after you've learned it, skip on day two, if you take 10 minutes only 10 minutes to review, assuming you understood the content on day one. Right. On day two, if you take 10 minutes to just uh, kind of casually review it and and make the effort to be intentional in that time, then you're starting to you're starting to uh, recollect and keep it fresh. And then if you move to day seven and you take five minutes, just right. five minutes on day seven, practice, review, take a look at it. Then you're good to go. And then if you go at day 30 mm -hmm. and you take two to four minutes yeah, to recap what you've learned, then you can almost guarantee a hundred percent recollection. Mind blowing to me, I think, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I think it's, it's huge and it's, um, it's a powerful tool for anybody who has information you need to remember. And it, uh, after I started researching it a little bit more, there are other people that have come up with different retention methods that say theirs are superior, right? So right. instead of day two, seven, and 30, as he outlined in, in 1885, some now say uh, day three, day five, and day seven, right? right? So they give a little different regiment and, and they claim that there's been testing done uh, you know, to maybe improve those results. Yeah. Um, but the they they call it time phased learning or okay. spaced learning. So that to increase that retention. So the commonality between all the research that we've been able to read since is work try to find what works for you in mm -hmm. your situation, in your brain, so to speak, and embrace that. And now you'll have something. Now if you have to learn a concept for whatever it might be, or different ongoing materials. Um, that's how you, yeah. uh, a good way to approach it. Um, I don't think there's anybody that can argue with time phased, other than if we had a brain dump, you know, yeah. we're not at that point. But, um, you know, when I used to um, work, they we when we teach the leadership classes, it was time phased, always had a better outcome for the participants than doing it because we did like a you could do it in three days and you get all this for eight hours you're in class and you're learning it or you could do the time phase which was once a week for right. you know eight weeks and um the outcomes were remarkable because a lot of the onus wasn't put back on the participant right right it, it was the way the structure was set up and so it made it much more um much more easy is not what i want to say but it was easier um mm -hmm. and and more palatable for people to retain and gather and it was just the nature of how the information was given so i thought yeah. that was fascinating i just remember back when our daughter now that's 24 that we referenced earlier when she was in school just like her older brothers we talked about uh, spelling words. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so, you know, to me, I always told my children, I believe you should get a hundred percent every spelling test because it's an open book test. Right. The teacher tells you what they're going to test you on. You just have to be ready approximately a week later, generally, um, right. to have those going, uh, and, and nail that. Um, and yeah. school knew how important reading and comprehension was, right, for our ability to absorb and, and uh, retain that knowledge. And so with them, when she was younger, and, and what I had them do when they got their spelling words, if it was at Friday before the Friday they were tested, yeah, 
they had to write each spelling word for us 10 times every night. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the unusual part was every one of my children I learned was that even though they did that the first time, none of them ever got 100% on that first test. Wow. They, they really uh, had to learn how to learn, if you, if you know what I mean. Yes, I do. Um, and so it was, uh, uh, it, it took some time, you know, and I remember with my daughter, Brooke, it took her about three times where she had to write them 10 times each week. So about three weeks. Yeah. And then you could tell it kicked in. Right. She was like, okay, I got this. Now I've learned that skill that I didn't have before. Yeah. And I can do it. You know, and then of course they'd say, Dad, I don't want to write my words, you know, and I'd say, okay, if you have it and you can get it hundred percent on Wednesday, right. then we, you don't have to write them the rest of the time. Right. And yeah. then Tuesday and then Monday, and then they'd get their words on Friday. They'd study them hard Saturday and Sunday. And then I test them Monday. Mm -hmm. So they were ready for Friday. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they, it's just a practice. And I think a lot of parents implement that strategy. I don't know. Did you do that with yours, your kids? I I'm trying to remember back what we did with the spelling words, but we, we, we did practice them together. I'm trying. And I also, I used to, I used to have these electronic letters that they could like put together and it oh, would, fun. it would. Yeah. So I remember when they first started kindergarten and first grade, I would have those magnets on the, on the refrigerator that, that, you know, said the sounds yeah. and sang to you and, you know, and then A, A is for apple and apple means, uh, you know, and, yeah. uh, and I then, remember those, but fun right? <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. Back in the day. And then I would have the kids practice their spelling words, you know, I would, you know, I think I verbally, I would, you know, say the word and then they would have to like write it down on paper and stuff like that. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The repetition I think is really key. And I'm hoping lots of parents out there are still doing it. I'm not, you know, I don't know, but. Um... Right. I think, I think the key is when the children are younger, they have to learn how to learn. If yeah. that makes sense, right. You, you, you need to understand how you comprehend and how right. you retain yeah. and, I, I think it's almost like a, a physical muscle. If you're going to lift weights, right? You have to lift the same thing with your brain, right? And retention, right? Yeah. And that's why I know a lot of the older people um, use crossword puzzles to keep yeah. their mind active, right? So go, and right, yeah. and those type of tools, right? Just to keep that uh, flexibility there. Um, but when you know when our children are trying to excel and we see them struggling and they need some tools, we really think that this is a tool that's reasonable that they can use. It doesn't cost any money. Right. It just takes effort. It just takes effort, right? And time. And, and, and time. such a minuscule amount of time, right? So yeah. it's not like a lot, but the, the results, um, if you can improve it by a hundred percent, well, why not try it, right? right. It's just being that discipline just a little bit to put in the effort. Well, and I know, uh, like our first child, um, he uh, his goal was to go to Ohio State. Mm -hmm. And so to go to Ohio State, um, you know, we wanted him to uh, get as high a grades as he could get to get some scholarships. Yeah. We, we wanted any money that was available out there. And he really worked hard in school and, and he was a smart boy. And so he had a great ethic in that. Um, and he, I have to say, found how to retain information on his own. Right. I didn't know those things to help him with. And he did it by himself, right? right? So we were really fortunate in that way. But because he did it, I feel like I really never figured it out for the rest of my children. Right. Uh, it, it wasn't a, a big, it, it wasn't a need that identified itself that dad needed to step into. Right. Yeah. I I just kind of felt like they would all figure it out themselves. And now that I look back, I wish I would have known a way to help them because it might have got them up that curve quicker. Right. With better results. And so, you know, I think the 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 cl clearly the reading is so important for these children and the comprehension. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, uh but yeah, second to that, I think the uh the reading comprehension, but the, is the retention of all yeah. of it, you know? It, um, it is. But to me, uh, you know, like when you watch somebody that's struggling to read, they're not comprehending anything that they're true. saying, right. Or right. reading, 
they're working so hard to read the words <laughs> that their the retention is not even an issue because they, yeah. they haven't got to that level yet, right? Exactly. So yeah. Yeah. So, well, we're just assuming that they learn it first. Like they said, if you in that learning session, if you've if you've been capable of retaining it and you learned it, yeah, then you can make this work. Yeah. If you don't know it to be in at session one, then yeah, you got to go back and put a little more effort in. Right. I yeah. right, exactly. It's yeah. just the you know, it seems like in the college level, they they do teach you, uh, but only a certain percentage, right? Right. You're left to on your own for every hour of class time. They want you to spend, let's say, an hour outside of class reading. Right. And so to be successful at those highest levels, you have to be able to read it and comprehend it and retain it and then apply it. Right. You know, I, I feel like <clears throat> that's an important thing that we should not put on our school systems, but I think it's an important thing. Why aren't the schools teaching that? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But just like we've learned, they, you know, they don't teach you how to balance a checkbook often. They don't teach some of that natural stuff, but and that's it falls on the parents. So I guess every little bit we can do to help, um, you know, and then college, I know they have a college readiness class or something all freshmen have to take. Did your kids need to take something like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it kind of helps prepare you, but I don't know that it teaches studying. And I think that's a critical component because there's many reasons kids don't make it through school. Um, but uh, struggling academically could certainly be one of them. Um, you know, an another topic, uh, when our oldest started, uh, was looking at going to college, um, in between their senior year and that first year at Ohio state, I offered to buy them by him a speed reading class, mm -hmm. right? I really felt that that would be something valuable to him. Yeah. And, and, you know, I said, Hey, I'll pay for it. We'll pay for it. Go ahead. And, and you know, I have to tell you though, guess what? <laughs> I got zero buy-in. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say? If it's not your right, if it's not your idea. Yeah. Usually it's hard to sell. So, yeah. And so he never did and he made it through and he did great. Don't get me wrong. You know, it just, um, I really feel that if you're going to set someone up for a career, then try to give them tools to be successful. And right. especially in college, if uh, not all children, not all of our kids went to college, right? Some went to trade schools. Right. And I really think that's great for some children. Not mm -hmm. everyone's made to go to college. Right. Uh, you know, and that's okay. That's wonderful. Uh, do what you excel at and enjoy. And, and you can stay then doing that for a longer period of time. Um, but if, if you have a child that's going to go to college, not only is the retention important, but then I do think the next level is the speed reading. Yeah. Get them some help uh, because the difference, most of the kids that I knew and, and including myself, I didn't, I was not prepared for the rate of information that was disseminated to me that yeah. first year in college. college. Right. I was not prepared for it. And neither of my parents went to college. Right. So they couldn't warn me. They couldn't advise me or tell me. Yeah. I think nowadays I, uh, <clears throat> for younger generations, I think they're seeing more college prep efforts yeah. Um, especially depending on the school, the high school you go to or something, right. They, um, they're prepared. They do a better job of preparing, um, the kids like, you know, Matt was from a small town. So yeah, when you go to college, it's a whole different, you know, learning efforts are different. And and that's something that we, you know, packaged into what we were thinking when we worked with the kids too, it's, right. you know, our, the learning, um, pyramid talks about when you just, you know, if you just hear something, you right. retain 20 percent um when you uh actually yeah when you talk about you it discuss have it a it goes up to 50 goes up to 50 and then when you actually practice it practice it and do it you're at almost 70 percent yeah and then what's that best one is when you can teach what you learn to somebody else that's 90 right. yeah according to that yeah yeah so I, it's, it's just fascinating information uh to know um and then if you can put it into play all the better with your family. Well, and I think the big independent learning hit with COVID. Yeah. In a way, right? Because so many kids were now having to be taught at home. Yeah. Through Zoom. And parents were working. Mm -hmm. But their kids were at home on a computer They're trying to learn. Struggling. <laughs> a new way. A new way to learn. Um, and I really think it brought out a lot of those issues, uh, you know, that that it's hard to not only learn it, but then how do you retain it? 
Yeah. And so that's, uh, it, and yeah, I mean, you know, another fascinating thing that we learned when we were researching this is that, you know, <clears throat> what impacts our, our memory age, obviously. Um, and that was something, you know, we all agree upon, but second to that, they say, you know, stress, um, can impact it, um, and anxiety or things like that. Right. Um, yep. and then was interesting, which is kind of quirky, but is dehydration. Yeah. So if you're dehydrated, so I guess keep your bottle of water close by when you're trying to learn new stuff. But I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a lot of water, 60 or 70 percent ish <laughs> or some number. I don't know the exact should have number. It seemed like it should impact your brain, but I guess our brain is uh, thrives on water. So that makes sense, I guess. But <laughs> it does. Right. No doubt. So, yeah. So that our, our goal today was just to really um, bring up a topic that as parent, as young parents, when we were there, we never even considered. Right. And that, that not only there is a forgetful curve or forget curve as they call it, um, but there is a method scientifically that is proven to help retention yeah. if you just use it. Right. I think, and I think there's a lot of things to, to take in, into play too, is that everyone learns differently and that everybody has their different strengths and more yes. people, some people are more inclined to learn numbers than they are inclined to learn comprehension. Some people have learning disabilities. Some mm, people just yes. have different ways of retaining information. Some people, you know, they can draw on the sand or draw a picture and that will make them remember it better. Some people going to do outlining and that makes them remember it better. Some people um, use colors yeah. to, uh, to put yeah. down on paper, you know, and highlight the, you know, specific, you know, subject matters in a certain color and then other subject matters in a certain color. And that makes them retain it also. So it, it there's a lot to play that when it comes to forgetfulness and retaining information, everyone retains information differently. So there has to be a different method for each individual yeah. person. And then even with, with COVID, I think that hurt our generation. I didn't think it helped our generation. I think, you know, a lot of kids, you know, for, for me, like I graduated high school in three years instead of four, and I skipped a grade. And I have to tell you, like I, I did two grades in one year, you know, I had to teach myself the one grade and then I, I was in an, uh, you know, I was in 11th grade and I had to teach myself 10th grade. You know, so it was, you know, but I, I have to say when I got to college, I felt more behind myself with reading and comprehension and writing because, you know, yes, I passed everything. I did everything on a high school level. But when I got to a college level, I don't think I was prepared. I think that maybe that one extra year might have done me good. You know, so, you know, yes, you could be at home and during COVID, but I don't think that kids are retaining the information or learning the information. And in a lot of school systems, especially school systems that have um, that have the money in their townships to put money into their school systems, they they find they can pick out the children that that don't retain information well, or and they can figure out ways to help those children to retain information, or they could have assistance in the classrooms to help those kids. Whereas, you know, um, you know, when you do scientific information, uh, when you look at scientific data, you know, are they putting them in separate trials? Are they putting the kids with disabilities in one trial? Are they putting the, the kids with, you know, specific, um, you know, that have a hard time with with comprehension and reading or and maybe the other kids that are more mathematically inclined than they are you know because usually if they're if they're good with numbers they're not always so good with reading and comprehension and vice versa and then right. you have kids that are, are just very creative you know mm -hmm. but they lack certain things you know and so there's so much to intake you know and uh you know, it, I think it really matters on, on the child itself and what those child's needs are. You know, I think we all can improve our forgetfulness, but I think there's different methods for different people, just like we all react differently to medications. I think we all react yes. differently when it comes to retaining information. But I think we need that practice and we need to consistently, you know, work on our forgetfulness because I think it, it the, the more you retain information, the more you go over it, I definitely agree. You retain it, you don't forget it, you know, but if you make it interesting also to the child or the teenager, you know, or the college kid, they re they remember it better. Where if you have a professor or a teacher teaching it in a very mundane way and, and <laughs> it seems very boring, 
I guarantee you those kids are going to walk out of there. Most of them aren't going to remember anything mm -hmm. in their head daydreaming half the time. Mm -hmm. But if you have right. one of those fun teachers that has these different activities and has bubbliness in their voice, I think the presentation also matters also. Oh, how, gosh, yeah. You know, well really, you know. It plays difference. a part for sure, yeah. One of the points, great points that you brought up, um, our oldest son, he would take information that he wanted to learn and almost make a song out of it mm -hmm. himself. Right. And that song helped him remember. Right. And so that was his technique. Yeah. It, we all remember, remember better with music, right? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. All the songs we all know in our heads because of the, the melody that's put to it. Wouldn't it be nice if schools in my, in my mind, mm -hmm. when you're in second grade or third grade or fourth grade, had a memory class, had a class yeah. at school that helped you learn those techniques that would be good for you. Right. And Stacy, as you pointed out, um, everybody learns differently. They're going to retain differently. And what if that class allowed you to, to uh, learn what worked best for you so that you would be more successful in the rest of your academic career? That would be wonderful. Yeah. If they had something like that. Yeah. Made me laugh when you mentioned the highlighters when those first came out, and I'm still guilty of it today. <laughs> you highlight I everything. <laughs> I still do that to this yeah, day, even right? when I'm reading a book. And I took speed reading. I actually I Did use you? it till today. Like I can whip through a 400 pages with you know in in a couple of days with no problem. Mm -hmm. But you know wow. I I always use highlight when I'm reading. I have to highlight. I have to bend pages. I I have different making notes. On on the side mm -hmm. and that will make me retain it better where yeah. if I just read through it and then you asked me what the book was a couple of days later or a week later or a month later you know even though I read the book I'm only going to remember certain segments of the book mm -hmm. whereas if I highlight it and make notes and then I go through the book I'm like oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah you know right. And so there, I think that you have to have certain techniques. I see a lot of kids use index cards, you know, and mm -hmm. that, that's a oh. great way of remembering things too, you know, I, and then, you know, they have like, now they have tablets for the kids, like these notebooks that Apple makes and, and they can make notes and it remembers it and it will record it. And it's just like us making notes when we were a kid. Now they have it electronically. So there's so many different ways. And and I still, to this day, I take consistent notes and that's how I remember things. And I, I have like a pile of notes and I file everything. And that's how making notes and highlighting for me was a, a huge factor in remembering things. I think everybody has their own specific way. Yeah. But and I think I, I think there's actually been research done on that because um, our kids tend to pick up their phone and put a note in the phone. Yeah, that's, big you know, news. and and I didn't know they were doing that. I'm like, what are you doing on your phone? You know, I'm going right down and taking a note. And, yeah. and I think they're still I don't know that the research has been validated yet, but I think they talk about how it um, we retain so much more when we actually write. Yes. As opposed to this digital, you know, because it's that actual brain to, you know, finger connection is not what I'm looking for. But, you know, the the dexterity right. of you actually doing it uh, helps our brain connect that. And um, right. I know for me, if I took notes tech like digitally, I'm not going to it's gone. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm actually the same I way. It. I write yeah. everything. I have notebook yes. after notebook, notepad yeah. after notepad, you know, all yeah. over the place. And, and that's how I, I maintain things. And then once it's accomplished or I don't need it anymore, I'll get rid of it if I don't need it. But then, the, you know, I keep all those notes. So I remember because otherwise I'm going to forget. I know mm -hmm. I will. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fascinated by that. And did you say you took a speed reading class? Yeah, I took a speed reading class. When did you take that and what made you take that? I took it in college and it just seemed very intriguing in my in my first year of college. And they taught you how to how to go through books, you know, and, and go through material one, two, three, and how to pick out the specific importance of each part that you're reading and how to remember it and how to how to, you know, how to how to just go through a, a large amount of, of material in a very short period of time, but grasp what words to focus on, what paragraphs to focus on, and what things to retain and, and to remember and and highlight in 
and things like that was one of the things that they suggested. But there's certain ways that they teach you how to go through a large amount of content all at once and how to remember um, everything. And uh, But there's specific words and phrases and things that you need to look for. And those are the important aspects of each part of the con that context of, of material and how to focus on those those things. So I, I could whip through a couple hundred pages very quickly and I will grasp the 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 entire the entire book, you know, when yeah. I finish it. I dabbled with that because there was an online speed reading course back in the day when you had introduced it to um, the kids. And so I was kind of rolling through it. I didn't purchase it, but it was like a test or something, you know, to get started. And so it was so uh, amazing. But what I did like to hear, because I'm like, I don't want to speed read everything, but then you can turn it off. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you just enjoy a novel or yes. something. And, and, but it was, yeah, I, I did not perfect it. Um, I got busy with raising kids and that and such, but, <laughs> but it is, it's, I, I would, I probably not, I, it's a great concept to learn. Well, and I think, you know, I looked for some course like that in college. I never found one. Right. And it's so awesome that you see the benefits even today from yeah. that class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I use the same techniques that I learned in that class because it was so beneficial that I kept repeating the things I learned because it was, you know, how do you read through 400 pages in three days, you know, or, you know, yeah. and, and so it's like, you know, those are the things they taught you and, and how to go through large, you know, amount and specific words, specific, you know, paragraphs, specific things to focus on that you just would catch your eye right away. You would, you would, you know, and then put it all together and you'd be able to, in your brain, know exactly what those, that large amount of context means. Wow. I, it, it feels like it's one of those things like uh, when you, you first took your typing class, I don't know, if you yeah. a typing class, and you're just like, you know, pecking away. And, and I would, I liken that to this whole speed reading concept, you really have to practice it. Yeah, um, you know, to be efficient at it. Um, but yeah, that is fascinating. But see, that was so worthwhile to you. Yeah. The in time that you invested in there is a skill that you've retained. Yeah. And continue to use. Yeah, exactly. To this Which day. is incredible. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, I think it's tools like that, that if we can empower our children to help them, it will get them through quicker, better, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? And so I, I think that's all we are as parents. Right. We just want to help equip our kids with tools and skills to make them successful. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Something that I noticed in just other conversations, like in, in our family in particular, is we just always love learning new things. And and surprisingly, you think everyone's like you, but everyone doesn't um, doesn't uh, share that same, you know, they're like, oh, you know, I believe really, I'm done with school. I don't want that. And right. our, our family is constantly wanting new things, you know, but not not trendy, hip, cool new things, but, just, <laughs> you know history and stuff like that. I think, um, yeah, it's why not keep learning, keep learning. Yeah. I, yeah, I just think it's intrigued with history. Go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, and, and maybe your children, you know, somebody listening to the podcast, maybe they're, you know, I have a nephew, um, that arguably, um, if he, he's now a retina surgeon, mm -hmm. an eye surgeon, um, and he went through medical school without having to go to class. He in well, medical now school, it's online. You can do some online. they would videotape all the classes. Yeah. So he would he would watch the class at two or three times the professor's speed of talking. Right. And he learned it. I mean, he, to say he can learn. But the thing is, he retains it. Right. And it's a gift. I, I think it's a gift from God, if you ask me, you know what I mean? Yeah. To be able to do that, that to that level, you know, and right. you know, I, we'd saw him at a Thanksgiving uh, party and uh, he had a girlfriend with him at that time. And she was also in medical school with him. Yeah. You know? And I said, Lincoln, you know, how is medical school? Is it hard? He's like, no, it's not hard. The girl with him says, I don't know what he's talking about. I cry every other day. <laughs> <laughs> I can keep up. You know, and that just goes to show you how different people are 
just yeah. being born. Right. <clears throat> you know? I think people just retain things differently. Like, you know, like for some things, I think I need to be in a classroom with a professor speaking and, and yes. be able to just really absorb what he's saying. And then I would, you know, and what I would do when I was in school is that when he was, when he was talking, I was writing nonstop. And then I would rewrite the notes as soon as I got home. And then I would, and then I would outline everything the next day and in, in the textbooks. But, you know, there are some things that, you know, my kids, he took a lot of online classes in college and they, you know, my daughter and my son, you know, liked the online classes, you know, better than mm -hmm. the being in the classroom. So I think it really matters on the personality, you know, of, of the person, because for, for me, I don't know if I can stare at a computer consistently and, and really absorb what they're saying without going off, you know, into another land, you know, and, right. and, but when he's speaking in, in front of me, I'm my, I'm focused and I'm listening, you know? So I think it, maybe it, it just depends on the personality and the level, you know, of IQ also. You know, some people just absorb things very quickly. Some people have great memories to begin with. Some people have to really struggle with it, you know? And so I think it really it matters on the personality because I think everybody is different, you know, but there are different techniques for different personalities and, and it's really trying them out, I think, and, and mm -hmm. then figure out which one works the best for you. Yeah, no, you said a lot there are everybody learns differently. And um, I don't think there's anybody out there who doesn't know or believe that. But um, yeah, I guess if you can have as many um, resources available to you, um, then you can kind of pick and choose and understand what works best. Well, at least if you know, if a school taught several different methods, yeah. or allowed you to, you know, as a child student, to try your idea or what yeah. you thought might work best for you, at least then that effort would be so worthwhile because right. just like you took the speed reading with you from there, these children, they have at least 12 years of schooling. Right. And so why not help them when they're in the beginning of that? Yeah. To retain easier and better. Right. They enjoy school much more. Exactly. I'm sure, the schools are like, come on, we're doing the best we can. <laughs> well, you know what I think I, is a problem also when I got involved in the school systems is that you have areas that are low income that don't offer a lot of things. And then you have areas that have more money in the township that put more money into the school systems. So unfortunately, sure. there are areas in, in the United States that the kids don't even have that opportunity. And then you go to other areas where they, they invest a lot of money into the school systems. And these children have extra type of classes. They have, you know, in between kindergarten, you know, uh, first grade classes. They have, you know, teachers and assistants in the classrooms. They pull the kids out as soon as they notice that they have a, any type of speech impediment or they notice that the child is not comprehending something the way they should, they immediately pull them out into these side classes to give them lessons to get them on track and, and a par with all the other children where you go to these low-income areas and they don't have hardly anything available to these children. So it, it's really unfair in a sense because you know you do have you do have you know areas in the United States where kids are really getting good educations and they have the opportunity to make these choices and then you have these low area incomes where they are not investing in, in the school systems and these children are very limited of, of what they're getting and you know they're not they're falling behind they're they're not learning and retaining and so then either their self-esteem gets really bashed or they just give up because they yes. just, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a lot of kids get frustrated. They like their, their self-worth goes downhill and it's like, why am I even doing this? I can't do this, you know, and they give up, you know, mm -hmm. so you have a lot of things to take in. It really, you know, I think it's really unfair that a lot of these areas that don't have a lot of money, you know, these children, you know, are, are getting not uh, the education that's equivalent to other areas. You know, these are the areas we should be focusing on and we should be trying to do whatever we can to get them you know really established so they could have these type of classes to move these children up so they could actually get the education they need so they could have a fair chance of becoming you know whoever they want to become when they grow up yeah we agree 100 you know we now live in arizona you know we came from ohio 
And if uh, we looked at the U.S. News and World Reports ranking of states when we moved here, um, and um, Arizona was ranked, I think it was number 47 in education, mm -hmm. generally. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's a horrible statistic. <laughs> Who wants to be number 47? Yeah. Right? And, you know, when it came to income, Arizona was ranked 17th. Mm. So, it's, so what are we doing? Yeah, so it's, it's, what's it's going on? How do we, you know, now like New Mexico right next to us, they were ranked 49th in the U.S. News and World Report study. Right. But financially, they were ranked 49th as well. Okay. So that made more sense. They have limited resources financially. And so it makes it harder for them to step forward as like we were discussing, you yeah. know, but then there's states like Arizona that, you know, where we're 17th financially and 40. So why are we so low academically when we have the money? Yeah. So I think that's another problem. That is know? another problem. Yeah. That it's just not being done to well to reach our, our the, kids, the, the kids yeah. that are here. Um, mm -hmm. and I don't know that the kids are really any different in Arizona compared to another state. But I, I think I, kids are kids in general, yeah. you know? And that's the big boom on charter schools, private schools, home schools, you know, because we do have a lot of those as an opportunity, um, but not everybody has the affordability to do that. But I guess it, depending on the state and what your ranking is, you know, maybe you can, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of different opportunities out there for families now compared to when we were in school you know you had private yeah. or public right. <laughs> you know yeah. and it wasn't Montessori and all these great options for kids to learn differently the big push that you read about in Arizona is um, Arizona started a thing called ESA um, mm -hmm. where they where parents can then direct the funds that the state would normally put to your child's education and you then can actually dictate where you want them to go and how you want them applied, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like um, a, approximately $1 billion of the state's education budget now is going to ESA parents be in Arizona uh, because the parents are unhappy with those results, you know? And then yeah. you see <clears throat> you see the uh, teachers union, if you will, in Arizona upset and want to close it uh. because they're saying, you're taking money from us, you yeah, know, it's a, and, yeah, it's and that's a hard a lot mix. of controversy. Yeah. I mean, you, you want the children in a public school system to be socialized, right? You want those, uh, learn all of those things. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if the, if they're not doing their job, then as a parent, you might want to do something differently. So I think, you know, that that's a, it's a hard thing. You I know. think they're still trying to figure it all out. <laughs> yeah. And you'd think you'd have it figured out by now. <laughs> you would hope. Yeah. But yeah. they Come haven't. It. Yeah. No, no. So, but yeah. So our idea today and our concept, we just wanted to help parents think about, which we did not when we were young parents, right. was there is a forget curve that's been documented in science. And science has documented a way to, to improve it. To improve it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and it may, and, and as we've talked about, it may or may not work for your child, but try something. Yes. And find something that does work for your child. Exactly. And you know, I'm I'm sure if we we dig down even deeper into the research, they'll have different techniques for different children and different children's personalities. So you know, as long yes. as parents are willing to take the time to do the research and then you know implement it into their child, you know, it can have a huge difference on that child's you know level of remembering things and retaining information. It could actually help them in the future because a, a lot of kids have a, pro a problem with that. And that could actually, you know, help because if they're if they're struggling with something, and then they are and then they're retaught and they can retain what they're retaught, that could actually improve their level of of, uh, of education. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like success, huge and satisfaction in life. 
I oh, mean, for sure. Because, you know, you know, when kids can't, you know, you know, live up to the standards that they, they compare themselves when they're in school, you know, unfortunately, we're not supposed to compare ourselves to others. We're our own human being. But when we're, we're kids in school, that's a lot. Most kids do that. They compare yeah. themselves, but they, they, you know, I say like you, your, your name of your company, you know, Carmen's little leaders, they should be little right. leaders, you know, and not yes. worry about being like everybody else, but, you know, and, and but there's always even if you if you can't do well in one area you know most people don't have have one big strength you know and you know so if it's, it's okay if you're not good with numbers it's okay if you maybe you're not good with comprehension but you're great with your your hands and you know you could put things together one two three there's so many you know you shouldn't put yourself down but remembering right. things, I think, is important. I think that's something, you know, that we all, you know, because once our mind is gone, that's it, you know, and we've noticed right. that because of all the information about dementia and Alzheimer's in the news. But so we want to really do whatever we can from a young age to maintain and, and strengthen our memory, because it's very important. It's very scary if when if you wake up and you can't remember things, you know, it's a it's a it's something you don't want to have to do. So if we teach our children when they're young, like like just the information we were talking about, if you retain it, you can bring it through your entire life and it could help you in many ways. Yeah. You know, I think back now, one of the things that we did with our children and I forgot about it until now is uh, is ask them to do one action, get that under their belt. Can you go upstairs, get a cup and bring it back? Right. Then ask them for two actions. Can you go upstairs, get that cup? And can you go outstairs, outside and bring in the jump rope that you left out there? Mm -hmm. And once they get to three actions that you can tell them three physically, yeah. Um, then it is a big improvement um, on what most children can do. Right. Um, and so that was one thing that we did do with our kids was made sure that they could retain three concepts that they physically had to go do and execute. Right. Um, you know, and, and that was valuable to them, um, you know, but, but I do agree with you hundred percent. It's so children specific. How do they learn? And mm -hmm. how do they retain? So I think if parents put an effort forth to help their children, yeah, parents and children will enjoy that academic career much better. Hundred <laughs> percent. You know, there's a there's a saying that you know generally uh, a, a mom is as happy as her unhappiest child. child. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So we take it on. We certainly do. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have a child that's struggling with those things and you can help them, your happiness will also go up 100%. just along with the child's. So. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Definitely. Nice. So Great. if you wanted to take away like a couple of things that we went over today, what are some important factors that you'd like to emphasize for the listeners? Yeah, I think uh, one, if you can identify that there is such a thing called a forget curve. Yes. which we didn't know as, as young parents. Right. And number two, there is some scientific methods that you can try with your children right. that don't cost any money. Exactly. But can really improve what their, their experience. The one the study talked about in 1885 was, if Audrey, yeah. do you want to review Just that? From the learning session on day two, take 10 minutes. On day seven, take five minutes. And on day 30, two to four minutes and you're, you're on track. I think that's yeah. great. Yeah. And doesn't matter really what technique you learn. If you just, just keep rep being repetitive, doing... it's good. It's going to absorb in your brain is basically what it's telling you. Yep. Yeah. Nobody can argue that one. I don't think mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. it's just making the effort to do that little extra. Right. So that would be, yeah, yeah. that would be our uh, takeaway, yeah. if you will, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for, for today. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, Audra and Matt. I, I really enjoyed this session. I think it's something really good for people to, to you know, think about because like we didn't have that. Our parents, you know, left us to do whatever, you know, it was up to us to to succeed. And, you know, you know, the next generation, we got better at it. But, you know, I think if we, we take, look at some of the 
previous information that's beneficial and we repeat it in this in this generation it might actually do some good in our society agreed absolutely we need all the help we can get <laughs> yes definitely definitely <laughs> thank you yeah. oh, thank you thank you again we really appreciate being on your show and we really believe what you're doing is tremendous so yeah. thank you uh, thank you so much it's been great having you i can't wait to have you guys back sounds thanks. good thanks have a great day you, you too, too.